What's going on, Infinite Fam? Welcome back to another video. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on your post notification bell, leave a positive comment down below for a chance to get a what? For a chance to win a shout out in the next video. Guys, my baby girl is finally sitting. I'm so happy. I'm leaning forward very much, so if you see that I'm like so in the camera, I have to either lean all the way back or lean all the way forward. I can't sit up straight quite Whatever yet. Whatever makes you comfortable, babe. Whatever makes you comfortable. <laughs> and you're starting to walk faster and all that too. I am. And you use the bath. Woo! It's been a good morning, huh? Yeah, it has so far. I'm so happy. I'm proud of you. Mm, thank I really you. am. All right, guys. So a lot of you guys have been asking us in our DMs, on the comments, in the videos, are we able to have kids? Because you guys know that Janice had endometriosis surgery, but I'm gonna let her break down everything as far as us having kids, how the surgery went, the whole nine yards. Because she actually did have a call with her doctor yesterday of him breaking down the surgery and basically saying what her future would look like and all the good details. So go ahead and tell them everything that the doctor said. So endometriosis is a very tricky thing. And especially when it comes to being able to have children, that was always a big worry in my mind. Um, but I never like made it like known that it was a big deal because I didn't want people to know how bad I was like afraid that I would not be able to have a child with Isaiah. So when I heard and I found out that I had endometriosis and I couldn't have children, I was freaking out because I always said I never wanted to have kids as a joke because the children in my family are a lot to deal with. And I felt like everyone wanted me to be this like perfect girl. Like, she cannot have kids because Janice is perfect. And like I just wanted to like put on basically this face for my family and for everybody else um, that just saw me as like Janice that can't have kids like Janice and I is like the baby told her, guys, firstborn. I always told her stop saying you don't want kids stop saying you're never going to have kids because I'm very big and I tell her this all the time I'm very big on what you say and put out into the, like the universe it's gonna come back to you so when she said constantly I don't have kids I'm never having kids so on and so forth and then she ends up getting the news that she has endometriosis and that she might not actually be able to have kids she kind of took it like a slap in the face you were like damn and then i i gave her that look i didn't say but i gave her that look like i told you to stop doing that stop saying that stuff things kind of took a turn but i'll let you can finish off what you were saying yes so fast forward i already have gotten surgery and um the chances of me having children were still very uh, up in the air they were very slim considering very very how slim. far along you were so i found out that i had stage four endometriosis which is the worst kind um the worst you could possibly get my doctor actually informed me that he wished that I would have went to him two to three years prior because that's how far out the surgery should have been done. And so that was a little scary. And prior to going into my surgery, I also spoke to my doctor. He said, listen, like this, your particular case is very, very difficult. I might have to call some people in because of how, you know, it's looking due to the MRI. Fast forward to my surgery. He said that... The MRI didn't show everything that was going on in my ovaries. He said I had kissing ovaries. He said that it was also blocking off my colon completely. So at the last hour of my surgery, he actually had to call in a specialist that to help me um, detach my colon completely um, and reattach it in a different way. And also, I wanted to have the surgery done closer to my house. And he told me, no, like, this is the best decision to, like, go and do it in New York City because that, there's specialists there. Just trust me. Just trust me. And I kept on pushing. I was like, You even no. tried to reschedule. And I got I mad at her, guys. I got so mad at her. I'm like, why are you trying to reschedule? And I felt like you were just, like, scared. You didn't really. I, that's what I felt. It probably is not the case. But I felt like you were scared and you kept pushing it off. And I'm like. Low-key, I'm like getting mad at you because you're putting yeah. your health at risk and your fertility at very Everyone high risk. Everyone got mad at me. My doctor was like, absolutely not. We can't reschedule. No, you're he crazy. He was like, you need to get the surgery done. I don't feel safe postponing it even like a day later. He already like made it farther out because I had to wait till my tattoo, my new tattoo. I had to wait till it healed two weeks. So he was already pissed off that I got a tattoo and that like I kept trying to push it out further. 
he told me like your chances of having kids are like basically non-existent i hope you understand that why are you trying to push the surgery it's not happening we have the date you can't push it fast forwarding to sorry this is like all over the place it's just like no i feel like this is a good breakdown details that we need to hit um yeah. like to tell you guys now that my surgery is done and over with the big question is am i able to have children now and what he told me... Can we just say how when he called you and told you everything, especially like how your future is going to look besides like the kids part, the future you like broke down? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, you I, forgot that part. <laughs> I, I didn't think we were going to... I don't know. I, you want to say that part? Because like, I don't know. I mean, they, they were talking on the phone and he was giving her a breakdown of everything and all that. And a biggest, one of the big issues with endometriosis is that you may have to get multiple surgeries in your lifetime because right. it's something that keeps coming back. Now, like she said, she was stage four, which is very severe. It's the worst case you could get. Um, we automatically, before even going into the surgery, we knew that she was going to have to get surgeries like every five years, give or take, because yeah, that's usually I what was, people have to. Yeah, I was prepared for that. Like, I was prepared to... Just spend the rest of my life getting surgery, 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 one after the other, scar after the other. And I, in my head, I was just prepared to have like kind of a miserable life, to be honest. And I was like in that mindset and I just wanted to push it off as far as I can. So that way, October is my favorite month of the year because it's Halloween, it's our anniversary, and it's the best weather here in Jersey, and I just really wanted to take in, like, this last month of enjoyment, and, like, just, like, have this to myself, because I knew that in my future, I was just going to have multiple surgeries, and I probably won't be able to have kids. I was thinking so negatively, I was thinking, like, maybe Isaiah, like, would be better off with somebody else, because I'm infertile, and I carry so much baggage with all my surgeries. And if we couldn't have a kid, in my head, low-key, I was preparing for that, like, after you got out of surgery, if he says we can't have kids, I was, like, mentally preparing myself for that, because you know, obviously, I do want to have kids in the future, but... If we can't, we can't. It is what it is. I can't blame you for that. I can't get mad at you for that or anything like that. But my solution to that was get more dogs. Mm -hmm. We were just going to get more dogs. We were going to get a big dog. I wanted to get a pit bull. You could have got your Rottweiler and then maybe another small dog for Blue to hang out with. Mm -hmm. Right, Nene? Little crazy boy. But, um, yeah, so during the call, uh, he broke down everything and was discussing her future and all that. And before the call, I told her, make a list of questions so you can ask him for things that you might be uncertain about, you know, like kids, uh, future surgeries, stuff like that. So the first question she asked him was, am I going to need more surgeries in the future? And his answer made her broke down and start crying. The answer to that question was, is she going to have more surgeries? He said, very unlikely, less than 10% chance. He might be, he said maybe even less than 5% chance. Right there, Janice broke down, started crying because like, you, how'd you feel at that point? It was like a sense of relief. Yeah, because uh, like my whole life I felt like a burden and even more so now that I'm going through all this health stuff and um, so just uh, hearing that news that I won't have to continue to get surgeries that like this is probably the only and that he said that there is a chance because it's tricky and I had to anything can happen. It's he basically said it's not impossible anything can happen but he said it 10 less than 10 percent even less than five maybe she started breaking down right there and i'm not gonna lie her crying tears of joy got me all emotional and me watery eyed i cried though but <laughs> then the next question after that was um you know am i gonna be able to have kids or something like that that that's did you ask that or i think he kind of like went into he that. went into that yeah he went into that and basically he said your chances of getting pregnant now are really really higher so having endometriosis, you, it's still difficult. It might take a couple of tries, but you know, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, she will be able to have kids. Thank God. Having, and I told her this and I got emotional with this part too. I told her, I was like, yo, you did it. You beat stage four endometriosis. And I'm getting emotional now too, because I'm like so proud of you and I'm so happy. Oh, I love you. I'm crying and you make me cry. <sighs> okay, I'm good. I'm good. Nah. I promise. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No crying. No crying. I'm not crying. My eyes are sweating. Nah. <laughs>
Nene, you you gonna have a little baby boy or girl in the future? Eee, they're gonna love you so much because you're so loving. And you gotta protect them, okay? Thank you. Thank Guys, you. he was so protective over me the whole surgery. He wanted to lay down literally on my stomach, and I'm like, can you not, please? But yeah, guys, so the answer to that question is yes, she can still have kids. Very big plus. She beat stage four endometriosis. She's not going to need very, very slim chance, very, very slim chance of her having future surgeries. So everything out of this surgery, as severe as her case was, came out the best way it possibly could have. Mm -hmm. And for that, you got to thank God. And I'm actually so happy that you didn't push it back anymore. Me too. Like, I feel like I wish I would have known about him sooner. I wish I would have went to him, like he said, years back. But I didn't even know I had endometriosis until three months ago. Yeah. Like, it's literally been three months that all this stuff has been going on. It's been crazy. It's been very, very crazy. Stressful. And on top of, like, handling life stuff, like, regular life stuff, and, you know, it, it's, it was a lot. And now I feel like... I could finally be normal, live a normal pain-free life. I know it's not going to be 100% pain-free. I know it's not, but it's going to be so oh, much let's, easier. Let's talk about that part because you guys know that she has stomach issues, you know, like IBS, she's allergic to gluten and all that. Now, he did say that after this surgery, she should feel a whole hell of a lot better, less back pain, less stomach pains. He did say it's not going to all 100% go away. If you have IBS, you have IBS. You know, having endometrial surgery is not going to take that away. But he did say because he had to detach her colon because things were getting a little messy up in there, it basically freed up space because how every how swollen everything was inside of her, basically the food that needed to get out, it was like getting blocked from all the swelling. So it was causing like all that stomach pain because there was nowhere for the food to go. There was That's why the bloating was there. All that good stuff, but basically, yeah, and he, she's good now. Yeah, he also told me that if I would have waited longer, then I would have had very severe issues with my colon. Like, he's, he said, like, he touched on it, but then he changed the subject because he didn't want to think about it. But he said that, you know, I would have had to have a bag attached to me, like, in order to use the bathroom for the rest of my life. He was like, good thing. Like, we took care of that. Like, you don't have to deal with that anymore. Your case was very, very difficult, very severe, and a lot of bad things could have happened thank god it, nothing did mm -hmm. and the surgery went overall great he was very confident about it and overall everything just went great there's nothing else to say really that is literally the end no more endometriosis issues hopefully i feel free we should celebrate and guys i opened the video saying that she was able to use the bathroom because he said after she's able to finally use the bathroom she's gonna feel a whole hell of a lot better and she used the bathroom today and she feels a whole hell of a lot better. Yeah, like every single day I kept on like, like sitting on the toilet like, oh my goodness, my butt doesn't work. <laughs> we gonna stop right there. We gonna stop right there. So honestly guys, that's probably, it's gonna wrap it up for this video. Um, we had a lot of questions regarding that type of stuff. If we're gonna be able to have kids future surgery, stuff like that. So we had to give you guys the rundown. A lot of people didn't actually know what kind of surgery she had. So that's why we had to tell you guys endometriosis and all that. But yes. we covered that in the first video, the surgery day it kind of shows, you know, the loyal ones versus the non-loyal ones. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's going to wrap it up here, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video and you guys are happy for the future, happy for Janice, make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button, comment down below, something positive. Again, your positive comments really helped us throughout this whole journey and this whole process. We love every single one of you guys, and it's time for today's post notification shout out. So today's post notification shout out goes out to Danny Flores. Thank you so much for your love and support. Isaiah and I love you. If you guys want a post notification shout out, all you guys gotta do is like, comment, share, and subscribe. We switched it around. Okay, uh -huh. we switched it. I'm doing it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Make sure you guys turn on your post notification bell so you guys are always notified whenever we drop a live video. And with all that being said. See you guys in the next video.